I got the horse right here. The name is Paul Revere. And here's Hello, racing fans, and welcome back to another edition of Handicapper's Corner brought to you by the Derby Bar and Grill. I'm Mike Heads, along with Drew Forster. We're going to go through the Sunday, June 28th races as we continue on with the holiday weekend of racing action. Well, actually, mid... Semi kind semi of Semi kind of. We're going to yeah. stretch it out to Wednesday, July the 1st, which will be our next live car. We've got nine races on the Wednesday. We've got seven races today. Let's get right into it. With some $8,000 claimers. Uh, most of them are Colts and Geldings. We do have one filly in here. Portray Your Vision is going to go up against the boys. Uh, going a mile on the 16th. I, I ended up on the five horse here, Occupy Vancouver. Yeah. Uh, I kind of like this horse on the stretch out. His best race is at Golden Gate. We're going long. Uh, his sprint runs here. He chased some Milk I mean, Joey last time. You know, I thought performed admirably for chasing those sprint type fractions and uh, I just think the horse will be better suited to a mile on the 16th. I think there's some speed in here with the two Bandolero and the three Rebus. I think he gets the box seat right in behind them yeah. and it's going to be awfully tough to beat. So I'm going to try the five horse Occupy Van Vancouver to defeat the aforementioned Rebus and Bandolero who are both live in here. Rebus is going to be the favorite, yeah. no doubt about it. But I mean he's uh, had his chance, he ran a big race last time, Uncle Willard and get next out winner Ganby, uh, and he gets into a conditional $8,000 racer, that's a big drop for him. He, he's, he's live in here, I just worry about Bandoliero messing him up a little yeah. bit. That's the only reason why I slightly gave Occupy Vancouver the nod. I went 5-3-2 and two in the Sunday opener. I did go to the 3, I did go to Rebus, I think he's the tough horse in here. He is. Uh, yeah, just got beat two lengths by Uncle Willard, then the last one. He, got, he was trying to chase Uncle Willard. They went in 46 for the half. That's that pretty ridiculous. quick going uh, a mile and a 16th. Got a little tired. Did get beat by seven lengths, but they were pretty well strung. It only got beat a neck by Gamby, who came back to win his next start. So I went with Rebus on top of Bandolero. Uh, he is a three-year-old tackling older horses in here, and he does come out of a conditional race uh, with Stranger Rails and Spirit River. That's why I put Rebus on top of Bandolero. And I put Overtime, Mike Chabera's horse, Overtime. Of course, there's a shot. Yeah. yeah, I was a little disappointed with his race last week. I thought he'd run better. But uh, Mike does run him back in a week, and uh, Antonio Reyes sticks with him. So I put him in the third spot. I went three, two, and four in the first. On to the second, an $8,000 claiming race for three-year-olds. And uh, I've gone with the Mark Cloutier double here. I went to the three, Mr. Rosberg. Uh, but running for 16, that last 16 he ran in was fairly tough with Brother Duster, clear to victory, and Cognac. And uh, that was like a month ago. Now, you know, so he's had a lot of time off. Uh, Working towards it, Mark Cloutier has been heating up lately, and I like uh, Antonio Reyes uh, takes over in the iron. So I put him on top of the four cognac. Another one uh, just ran last week. He cuts his price in half. I liked him last week, but I was disappointed in his race. That's why I put him in the second spot today. And Typhoon Taylor out of the Harold Barry Barn. Another one that uh, broke his maiden for eight. Uh, absolutely trounced that day. Harold claimed him that day. Ran him in the 16 against that Brother Duster cleared to victory cognac race. Now he gets back in uh, to his $8,000 level. I got him in the third spot and against uh, straight three-year-olds. I went three, four, and five. Yeah, I've gone to the four-horse Cognac. I think that's your horse to beat. I yeah. know running back in a week, but uh, the race two back behind Brother Duster and cleared to victory was decent. Uh, last time, kind of got pinned down on the inside behind a slow pace, and they really sprinted home. Kiss him goodbye ran very fast yeah. the last part of that race, and uh, Cognac was kind of left in the dust a bit. But uh, I think the class drop will help him, and he's going to be pretty tough. I think the one horse, look at me, another shot. Yep. That was just his first run uh, after coming from Golden Gate. He was off for a little over a month and um, yeah, tried to chase. Years by other duster and and it, it cost him second or third he ended up running fifth but it, once again it was just his first race in vancouver i think he will improve off of that race he's the one i kind of want out of that race him and cognac uh look at me he's one that's eligible to move forward so i wouldn't even be surprised to see him win it and up at the five horse typhoon taylor i agree for third looks like it could be the pace in the race didn't get out there last time to get speed rider mark buchanan he'll get him out of there and, and get him on the lead and a uh, little less speed in the lineup here there's quite a bit last time but he had to settle for laying fourth early but uh, uh i'm gonna put him in for third but i went four one and five in the second race on to the third uh maiden phillies and maris 12 five going six and a half furlongs uh, I ended up on the four and take a shot on catch and yep. fire. I don't love the horse, and this horse might not be able to run at all. I have no idea. Uh, they, but a good work back in 47. I do so respect the connections uh, for running it for 25 first, or for her for 25 first time out. She was well backed, didn't finish the race, uh, pulled up on the back stretch, and uh, there was nothing seriously wrong with the horse. So but they do drop her for 12-5, had the mandatory work because she was probably on the stewards list for not finishing yep. the race. 
had to work in front of the stewards, worked in 47 flat, and paid real rides uh, for Anita Bolton. So I'm going to say this horse uh, rebounds with a better effort. Put the six horse Saintly Center in for second. Uh, a decent debut last year at Emerald Downs. Uh, Taking her a while to get back to the races, almost been a year now, uh, but uh, she's back at the races, gets Amadeo Perez, which is encouraging. I think this horse could come rallying from off the pace to get a piece of it. And up at the two horse, uh, Tessana, I couldn't, I had trouble finding a third horse, and I'll try Tessana for Gary Sates. Uh, this horse has been working well in the morning. The last three works are quite quick. I know a lot of the storm victories do work quickly, but uh, it's not a surprise to see them run her for 12-5 yep. with those kind of works. So I, I wouldn't be surprised to see her winning. I know Gabby Asensio does a lot of work for yep. work for uh, Gary Sates in the morning, so he's going to give him a shot on this filly. So I put her in for third. I went four, six, and two. I actually went with one you didn't mention was the five Sky Victors. Actually, I'm putting the real hex on Mark Lucci here. I'm going to pick <laughs> I know, the you're first like three. Jeez. ahead of his fan club. Sorry, Mark. <laughs> uh... I thought a very good race last time. You know, they started for Maiden Special Weight. That really wasn't for her. I don't think she got anything out of that. Now she yeah. runs back and went in 21 and 4 and 45 and 3 and faded uh, behind uh, Silver Ovation and Xenia. But I think, you know, she'll get a lot out of that race. I, I see her rebounding with a very strong effort today. If she can get a little easier for actions, I think she's going to be tough to get by. Uh, Antonio Reyes rides today. I put the six Saintly Center, as you mentioned, out of the Barb Heads Barn. I like the fact that Tim McCann thought enough of her to, to run her for 25, yeah. her first start last year. Now she uh, comes uh, up here and, and cuts her price in half. Amadeo Perez uh, rides, as you mentioned. And the four horse, your top pick, Catch and Fire. Yeah, not really sure what went wrong last time. Obviously, nothing too major. She did come I back in 47 that's, that's and 4. That's the reason I kind of like it. I think she's going to be speed. She's she'll be out quick, there with Sky yeah. Victors. I just think she will be a speed horse, and that's why I didn't pick Sky Victors. That's the only reason. But, but uh, uh, yeah, so that could that yeah. could cost both of them. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I put Catch and Fire. Uh, Fella Chels, Anita Bolton, Pedro Alvarado, always very dangerous in the third spot. I went 5, 6, and 4 in the third. On the fourth, a maiden 4,000 for Phillies and Mares. And... Uh, I went to the Sixer Easter Sunday. I thought a very good second by Country Pearl last time. She seems to be rounding into a, a top effort and uh, just got beat. Unlucky to lose last time. Just got beat ahead. And uh, I like her the, the best of anybody in here. I put the five horse Yakula, who Mel was running for Maiden Special Weight last year. Showed up this year uh, first time for Maiden Four. Just got beat a half a length in that Easter Sunday right. Sunday Country Pearl race. And Amadeo Perez takes over. I like that move. And the third spot, I went with Ziggy Meister of the Rob Maven Barn. Interesting to see Pedro Alvarado take the call here. Uh, this filly's showing a little bit of speed before. I see Pedro putting her on the lead, saying, catch me if you can. I went 6-5-3. and three. Yeah, I went a little different here. I went to the one horse, Storm and Angel. Uh, pretty impressed with her run two starts back by and lost humor uh, when he yep. Mark Clucci winners. And uh, I thought she ran very well that day. And then got hooked wide in a much tougher four thousand dollar race. That race come up tough with four four feathers dropped from maiden allowance, yeah. I think, to four thousand yeah. or some high end anyway. Striking for gold, not a bad filly. And I know Yakula got up for third, but this horse was a wa very wide on the first turn, got no position. I just well, drew a line through the race. Uh, I can't Come back, horses come back to work, gets the rail. I think that's the speed of the race. I like the one horse to just scoot out to the front and go. And uh, I'm going to try her to win it. Put the five, Yakula, with uh, Amadeo Perez for Mel Snow in for second. And I put the six, Easter Sunday, the obvious one. Yeah, running second behind Country Pearl. But Country Pearl was a big 20-time time maiden. maiden. And yeah, so I, I just don't know how much strength that race it is. And, uh, you know, a little worried that she's going to get over bat. But uh, I went one, five, and six in a very muddled and confusing fourth race. On to the fifth race. Uh, maiden sixteen thousand dollar three and up here going six and a half furlongs. I really like the two horse here. A heart yeah. set. I think this horse is very going to be very tough to beat. Got a tough, brutal trip for two bits last time. Comes back three weeks later, gets a better draw. Uh, David Lopez re-rides for uh, Hall of Famer Troy Taylor. And the horse that uh, just uh, beat him last time uh, for third, Shoe Schwab, came back to win a yeah. maiden special. They were actually one too. Tori uh, yeah. Tori Ador was was yeah. second in that yeah. maiden allowance too. So that. The second and third place finishers ran one, two in the next maiden allowance. So Hartsick got beat by some pretty good horses. Don't see a, a tough group he's facing here. So down for 16, Hartset should win. The four horse Yogi Man might be his t sternest test. Uh, has excellent speed. Ran into some other good speed in the race and smart focus ran him down. But yeah. I, I think Yogi Man will be a little bit better this time. Scratched out of that maiden allowance race last weekend in favor of this better spot. And up at the eight horse, if we knew then, I mean, the horse been running. Uh, Quite often, uh, no luck last time with the trip. Company's easier for if we knew then, but the price will probably be quite tiny. So I kind of stayed away from that one for winning, but uh, I can see the horse winning, of course. I went 2, 4, and 8, but uh, actually, I like the 2 a lot. The 2 is one yeah. of my best bets of the day. 2, 4, 8 for me. 
I agree. I got hard set on top uh, for the reasons you mentioned. I put if we knew then in the second spot uh, out of the Anita Bolton barn, just toss out that last race, that main special weight, and uh, very tough in two races. Just got beaten next by Call It Even, who was coming in here out of Turf Paradise, who was mm -hmm. a, a race fit horse. Came back another second for Maiden 25. Tried the main special weight. Now he drops in for 16. Uh, I don't mind if we knew then. In the third spot, I went with Too Much Johnson. Owned by our good friends, uh, Ken and Shara Johnson, good friends of the Derby here. Uh, two even races. I think he's getting closer. I think he's improving. I like the fact that Mike Anderson, yep. who's been making a lot of right moves this year, uh, puts the blinkers on and uh, Jeff Birmingham takes over. I put him in the third spot. I went two, eight, and one. In the fifth, on to the sixth. Three-year-olds and up, claiming 4,000. Non-winners of three lifetime, going six and a half. And uh, I went with a giant dropper here. Tapicero, uh, extremely well-bred son of Tappet, that uh, Swift Thurber has bought last year with hopes uh, of the derby been running extremely tough races he makes no uh they're, they're hoping for move. the derby now they're hoping for the four thousand non three yeah exactly I think they're gonna get he, it. he makes no middle move he doesn't stop mm. at like the 16 non two no. or something like that right to the bottom for four well, and then tapicero is just too much horse uh for these horses the second spot i went with the eight brother chunky who would be the favorite in here if it wasn't for the big dropper tapicero uh just got beat by London, two back. Then he ran to Uncle Willard in his last one, so Milkamin, Joey, Rebus, tougher horses. Now he drops into the fourth house. I got him in the second spot. I went with Mr. Cactus out of the Steve Henson barn, who running very good races. Just toss out that last one, you know, 44 and four on the head end. He just got a little tired and uh, give it up. But if he gets easier fractions today, he could be tough to run down. I went one, eight, and four. Yeah, I agree. I, I, I don't have uh, a lot to... You, you pretty much nailed it. The Tapicero is your horse to beat. One yeah. of the best bets of the day. If the horse can still run at all, this horse must win by a mile. Uh, Tapicero for me to defeat Mr. Cactus. You're right. This horse got caught off in a wild pace last time. If he can avoid a pace duel, this is the only one that can actually beat Tapicero. Yeah. And I put the eight brother Chunky in the third spot. Those are your horses. Yeah. One, four, and eight in the sixth. On to the seventh and final race on the uh, Sunday afternoon card. We do have $4,000 maidens here going a mile and a sixteenth. And uh, I ended up on the one horse instant cash. I'm going to yep. follow him back. Not a clever pick, but I, I like him uh, to defeat Renegade Cowboy and Jockey Style. I think those are the horses, one, six, and two. Uh, instant cash, good runner-up effort to Uncle Clarence last time. He was actually very game down the lane. Uncle Clarence ran a big race to beat him, but yep. uh, instant cash has the race under his belt at the trip. And uh, I think he's worth following Jockey Style. Uh, you know, made a brief middle move against tougher horses last time, drops in for four. He's bred to run long. And the six horse Renegade Cowboys, another one getting a little class relief yeah. for good connections, Amadeo and Rob Gilker. So this horse has got a big chance. I went one, six, two. I went with the five, Cash Solution on the Mike Anderson barn. Flopped us the chalk last time, but I like to see the fact that Pedro Alvarado uh, sticks with him. It was his second. Uh, try at a mile and a 16th, and maybe in his third try, he gets back to where he ran, you know, the first time he ran long, where he was right near the pace. I think Pedro is going to put him near the pace. <coughs> Excuse me. I put Instant Cash, your top pick, obviously, you know, the horse to beat, and you know, I put him in second. And the third spot, I put Renegade Cowboys, you mentioned, of the Rob Gilker barn. Amadeo Perez and him, uh, 14 starts last year. They won half of them, seven for 14 Herbie last D year. Action. No, yeah. maybe it was the year before Herbie was But year, anyway, still, uh, Amadeo does well. They're always dangerous Gil together. Gilker. And if I had a fourth horse, it'd be jockey style. I don't mind him either with the move to Antonio Reyes. I went five, one, and six in the nightcap. That'll do it for our analysis of the Sunday races. Uh, up next on screen will be our picks. Mike Back in race number one. I went to the five horse, Occupy Vancouver, one of two Rob uh, Mabin horses in here. Kind of had to fill the race with a filly uh, and with the one horse, Portray Your Vision, but uh, I think the five's the tough one, five, three, two. Race number two, I went to the four, Cognac, over the one and five. Race number three, I went to the four, Catch and Fire, over the six, St. Lee Center, and the two, Tessana. Race number four, the start of the late pick four, I went to the one, Storm and Angel. Kind of like this one. I went one, five, and six. Race number five, probably your best bet of the day, or I guess I guess you got a couple back-to-back -back yeah. best bets here, uh, but I do like the two heart set. I went two, four, and eight. Race number six, the other best bet, number one, Tapasero. We got nothing but best bets today. Right. Good. Good they to won't pay today. nothing, but one, four, and eight in race number six, and in the seventh and final, I'm gonna stick to the rail. Number one, instant cash. One, six, and two for me. On to Drew. Back in the first, I went to uh, the three horse Rebus over the two and the four. In the second, I went to the number three, Mr. Rosberg over the four and the five. And the third, I went to the five, Sky Victress over the six and the four. In the fourth, I went to the six, Easter Sunday over the five and the three. In the fifth, I'm with Mike on number two, Heartset over the eight and the one. In the sixth, again, I'm with Mike, as, as he mentioned, these are the two uh, probably 
most likely winners right. on the card. Number one, Tapicero over Brother Chunky, Mr. Cactus. And on the nightcap, I went to the five, Cast Solution over the one and the six. Well, we'd like to thank everyone for tuning in. Hopefully you enjoyed uh, this edition of Handicapper's Corner. A quick reminder, we do race Wednesday, yeah. July the 1st, holiday program, uh, 150. Always one of the bigger days at Hastings. Canada uh, Day, yeah. We do have four stakes races on the program, uh, three uh, Champion Series races, which are $8,000 starter races. It's a great card, 16 long. Uh, it's just all it's, nine yeah, races. It it's a really, really probably card. our best card of the year yeah, uh, to date. So we do have four stakes races. Uh, the older older horses will feature modern, uh, the fillies Mr. and mares. Bowling. Oh, Mario's in town. Mar and Mario Gutierrez, yeah. is, of course, is, will be riding Mr. Bowling and Touching Promise uh, in the two older horse stakes races. So it should be a lot of fun. Got a big 12 horse stake, uh, the Chris Loseth. Yeah. Uh, yeah 12, I know. three year old. I that know. one build up. So lots Same of. Same with the girls. Uh, lots of the derby. Three year old girls got 10. So uh, Yeah, with uh, Majestic races. Presence coming up yes. from Santa Anita, running the Kentucky yeah. Oaks. This horse is in Vancouver now. It's yeah. kind of cool. And Morning Coffee claimed by uh, Mike Wielden as well is in the lineup coming from Santa Anita. So uh, a lot of talent will be heading the starting gate this uh, Wednesday, uh, July the 1st. Once again, first post at 150. We do not race on Saturday, July yeah. 4th. We have simulcasting, of course, here at the Derby and at our, all our teletheater and Hastings locations. But uh, we do resume racing on July the 5th, Sunday. Yeah. We will have eight races on the Sunday, July 5th. Well, that'll do it for the, this edition. On yeah. behalf of Drew, thanks, everyone, for tuning in. We'll see you next time here at Handicapper's Corner.